have tornado sirens going off. They've been going off for about three or four minutes now, so must be pretty bad. Let's head in. Okay, so the tornado warnings are going off, so I'm heading to the shelter. See that? Another tornado warning just popped up for us. Let me click on that. Okay, there we go. Oh, wow, this is what's coming. All right, another tornado warning for us. Okay, another tornado warning. Okay, we got two tornado warnings in just a few seconds. And now you know why I put it indoors. We don't have to worry about being in the rain. Fire. Sure. <laughs> you got to repeat yourself now, huh? Anyway, she's got a doggy bug out bag. Look at this. Even Lexi's got a bug out bag. Okay, Sergeant Pendleton. Okay, Sergeant Pendleton. <laughs> I've never seen a dog smile the way that she does. Look at that. We have the berth. Here we have lighting. Yeah, but it's, it's, it's really... Um... You can sit back here, but we find it's a lot more comfortable than sitting on the carpet. Oh, Lexi's all happy. Oh, I gotta save my doggy. Gotta There's that storm going through. You can see it. Yeah, we got hit dead center of it, didn't we? And there's more on the way. Hey. Our bug out bags match Lexi's. Yes, they do. We have some extra military equipment from the military here. We have fire starters. I'll go here and go to that video and I'll show you how to make your own fire starter. Okay, so John's in the medical field. So he's, if you go right here, I'll post that video right there and John can teach you all the things nice. that you need in your bug out bags <laughs> and in your bug out shelter. Right, Lexi? And Lexi's an emergency dog, so she has her, she has emergency things in her um, thing as well. So if we have to send her out to help somebody, she can take uh, medical supplies to somebody. Even if we can't get to them, she can. You know, that could be a, anything from a bottled water to maybe an epidural. <laughs> Epinephrine. Epinephrine pen. This unit holds 16 people in all of these seats, including the one that I'm on. See, the seats go all the way around. I think, in my decision, I'm going to make these seats here a little deeper because my butt is a skinny butt. See, I don't have much of a butt. And I can't hardly really sit here. This is where everybody wants to sit on the end. And this is where it's the skinniest. But for them, you know, to meet the 16 person uh, standard they were trying to meet, they had to make this a little skinnier. I understand that because knees butt into each other here. See my knees, my long leg knees, they butt into each other. But I would rather have the deeper seat, wouldn't I, John? Yeah. Because this is the best angle for the TV. And you can see the tornadoes going through. Woohoo! Okay, so that's it. We don't have to close the door on ours because ours is inside which makes this really, really, really nice. And you can go here and watch us install this shelter and how we put in the foundation and stuff. So if you're interested in putting your shelter indoors, this is the best way to do it. I don't have to go out in the rain. Love it. Oh, also we have a three ton jack that will open this door and get us out as well. And that's behind John here. It's, let me get around you, baby. There's the three ton jack right there. Say bye. She came down here willingly this time. Did you come down willingly? You're getting used to it. Get your pets used to it. This is, I mean, I come down here, you come down here and write. I mean, you don't have to come down here in a storm. This is like another little family room, isn't it, John? Yeah. This is great. I love it down here. We, I made, I wanted it to look like a cubby cabin on a ship. And that's, I think I got that look. Extra medications, be sure to have those. We got walkie-talkies so we don't get separated. You know, if a disaster hits, um, a dust cloud, I mean, a tornado, telephones aren't working. Two-way walkie-talkie is very important. Okay, we're in our bug-out vehicle. And the puppy's here. And the puppy's a-pacing. She's so here. I'm driving. Okay. You want to stop off and pray for the world before you head out? Here's a good choice. Good chance right here. There's the back side of our place. We say goodbye to it. We may never return to it. Will be our feeling <laughs> in a true situation or it might already be level. Hi 
Lexi girl. Himself. That's very important. You can see for miles here, nobody should bother us where we're going. And when we get there, Hubby can tell us a little bit about what he knows about prepping. Oh, Lexi. Lexi loves. I can tell you this that a cemetery, a country cemetery, is a really great place. would take a bullet, wouldn't it? They're granite. But it's a really good place to hide, stop, relax, water your pets, rehydrate yourself. And of course, I always get my high off a little bit of sugar, which is a slippery tip. That's good. And we can see here, she's just using her little collapsible water bowl made out of nylon. hill here that's covering us. I mean that's the camera makes it look farther away and a little lower but that's a that's a pretty high hill for us right here. You can see we're still heading out in the country. You can still see silos way out in the distance there. Just an old country road, an old country graveyard. And now this is where we're going to try to trail and head next into our bug out spot. It's nice to own a woods like this and I want to show this to you we're gonna go up there and we're gonna see it this whole line right here and this tree line right here that's all a creek that runs down through there so we have this constant source of water on our trail all the way to where we're going and we do have our little Berkey water filters plus we have bottled water on us so we're more than covered with the distance that we're going Okay, Lexi, get your pack on. Lexi's ready. Lexi has her uh, paw gloves in her sack as well, as carrying uh, several bottles of water for her and us. She's carrying her own dog food, enough for about three and a half to four days of dog food. She's but that's what Huskies do. They're work dogs, aren't you, girl? She's also a trained service dog, which is being a little stubborn today because she likes it outside. Right. So here, John's going to demonstrate putting on his pack. Remember again, I can't can't stress it enough to stay um, hydrated. He had to put on his hat first there. There are my pieces right here where it belongs. Bring your phone. to the bug out vehicle. 
You just want to have more than one set just in case you get separated. A lot of people don't think about that, but more than one set of keys to the bug out vehicle or to your cabin or your location in case you get separated. And you know what I forgot? What? I plugged in the walkie talkies and I forgot the walkie talkie, so already I forgot something. We were down there messing with the one battery, so I plugged them in. Mm -hmm. We probably had about 20 30 minutes battery, which could have saved a life. But I also want to mention that bringing a dog toy is very important because your dog wants to sleep with his toy, his favorite toy. And this is her, she's had this since birth. It's the only toy she hasn't ripped apart. Ready to go? Ready to go, I got Ducky. You ready to go? She'll do anything for Ducky. You'll like 12 miles for Ducky, won't you? All right. right there. that this that means somebody else has been here especially this wide of a of a patch of grass so that means somebody's been in our bug out location um so there should be traps set or anything underneath this grass down here on the ground so see how it's all laid flat like this so this is where lexi comes in she's going to snoop around and see what we got so we'll let her we'll let john and we'll let her leave first come on lexi find a trap There's a lot of places in here for us to hide. That means there's a lot of places for someone else to hide. Now I do see a lot of blackberry and raspberry vines in here. So right now is a good time to get a little bit of supplement and gather some berries. 
if we think the coast is clear. So come on, we're gonna stop for a break and have a few snacks. I think that uh, Lexi loves blackberries and blackberries are really good in antioxidants and a lot of vitamins. Ras or blackberries are one of the best things and raspberries that you can eat. And that's why God put them in nature. So let's go pick some. This tree here, that, see with the, all the red berries on it? That's actually poisonous. That's a mountain ash tree. Those berries are poisonous. You cannot eat them. So we want to bypass that. No matter how good they look, we're going to bypass that fruit. It's a no-no fruit. footprint right here. See the mud? And it crosses through right through here. Now I'm going to go around and I'm going to see who else has been walking in our woods. Hold on. You guys stay here and stay back. Alright, okay. so what we have here is we have deer tracks. I have raccoon tracks, and I also have men's tracks. So somebody's been out here probably hunting, so we're probably okay, but that means they probably have some sort of a weapon. Now it's, it's not bow season until October the 1st, so they're probably just out here checking their, um, well, their entrapments. They put out salt blocks and deer cameras and things like that, and they come out here and check them. So uh, we'll find out where they're hunting uh, here in the woods. We'll find out what's going on here. Remember, don't hunt in someone else's woods without permission. It could be hazardous to your health. Something here. Here's the deal. That means that there's been a rope hanging from there and a salt block hanging from there or corn feed out of a five gallon bucket. And that means that's the spot somebody's been using to trap deer, to take pictures of deer and get them to rut and root and come in this area so they can hunt them. So that's a sign of that. So that means they definitely got hunters in the woods. Another sign is under here. As you can see down here, see all the limbs and all the limbs that's been laid there and stuff? There's actually use those to make areas to hide, to hunt, and give them a place to be so they can keep an eye on them. A lot of tree branches down through here. There's definitely this is a foot of the area of the footprints are headed. So we've got people living back in here or hunting back in here. There's a lot of poisonous plants here. Yeah, there's a lot of poison plants here as well. All right, so we're gonna move on and we're gonna come out to the other side of the woods. We'll see you back here in just a little while. Be sure and put on your tick spray. We found the deer stand right here. I know that we've been gone a few weekends, but it's not deer season right now, and that looks like it's been made a while back. So this is why you gotta check on your property sometimes here. Alright. Coming out the other end, and here we have another water source that runs all down this way. We sit like in a V of a water source that's in a V and it spreads off to this way and this way into another Y. Alright. 
All right, so we're gonna come on out here and we're gonna do our truck back around. So we're up to about six miles now. My pack is really feeling heavy. My pack actually weighed almost 12 pounds more than my husband's pack. Okay, lucky, we're already back. So it's almost nine miles. We're back to the graveyard. Oh, my shoulders weren't gonna carry, carry anymore anyway. Man, I gotta adjust my weight of the limit of my pack. I'm gonna adjust her pack. How's your pack feel? It's fine. Yeah, I got the heavy pack. All right, we made it back around to the graveyard. And that's it, that's our trek. So, on our, our walkometer, that's about nine miles we've went. And my shoulders are killing me. Day one was a killer. This is why you gotta do this a couple of times a week. Get out of the city, get out of your house, and uh, be sure and wear bug spray, check yourself, check each other for ticks. That could be fun, right? Hey, you know? <laughs> and we're heading back up to our vehicle. It was a beautiful day though. Beautiful day. Hi Lexi. Hi girl. I gotta get this thing off my shoulder. Before I die. I gotta lighten up my load. Ah, civilization. Well, the dead civilization anyway. Where'd we come in from? Up this way. Whew. So it was a beautiful day. We had a good time. We just got across the hole in the fence here to get back to our bug out vehicle. And we can rest with the dead people right up here. So a good place to pull over here is, my season in my way, but a good place to pull over here is at a golf course. Spotter where you clean your equipment. And this is farm country as you can see here. Usually you can find snacks, colas, beers, sandwiches, whatever in the clubhouse. So it's a nice safe place. The family golf course right here. This is a nice safe place. My neighbor owns it uh, to pull over and to get some of your equipment clean, check your equipment, get fed. It's a side road, off the busy road. So add something like that to your uh, bug out uh, prepping maps, okay? Golf courses, uh, usually they'll keep them open because there's food in there, so they wanna help you out. These are good people. Like I said, the one that owns that golf course is my neighbor, so I knew where it was at. And right across here is where the sheriff lives. So huh, you wanna keep the police on your route, their homes on your route. You want to really plan your route to know that you've got friends. And right there's another, somebody works on the sheriff's department. Right there's their vehicle. That's their uh, sheriff county vehicle. So it's their job to help you out. So, so there's another food source. Another food source right there on our route. And if we had horses, they'd more than welcome to us to uh, graze our horses in their, um, in their pastures. For the evening so add that to your bug out route and this is all on our route uh, going to and from our bug out station so keep that in mind and we made it back we survived the terror attack or the tornado or the nuclear <laughs> whatever it was that we ran from Check you for ticks. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> That's a thank you. Never been thanked for checking for ticks before. <laughs>